Hello everybody, happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. My name is Marla Tori, and for those who don't know who I am, I run a platform called The Funky Spork, where I share original recipes while promoting local food systems. So today, I want to introduce you to a really good friend of mine, someone that has been near and dear to my heart for many, many years. This here is John Dangler. Um, he runs a movement called The Well, and we're going to talk about The Well, what they're doing, and how The Well fits into the food systems process. So let me go ahead and begin. Um, well, first of all, John, thank you so much for taking your time to chat with me. Um, my first question is, um, tell me about yourself. About myself. I guess a couple, like, I don't know, historical, uh, let's say, things that I think are hugely formative of like who I am is um, when I was 17, I was involved in a head-on car accident, broke every bone in my face. And I think it was a seriously defining moment. I had reconstructed metal plating and everything, got a big scar across my head. And that, that uh, experience, one, put me in touch with a lot of pain mm -hmm. and despair, but then also uh, because I was put back in school in a wheelchair, started getting connected with people that were marginalized, yeah. kind of in that sense with the folks with disabilities that were let out of class early and it was maybe the first point in which I felt connected to that community of people. Yeah. And then over the years, I'd, I'd say that situations like that have grown. So something that happened eventually was I actually, a few years later, ate too much LSD, had an encounter with God that wrecked me completely and since have been a Christian, like since yeah. that happened. And um, that faith has put me in contact with in fairly soon after that with folks that are living on the streets. And just the more that I meet people that are struggling, dealing with addiction, mental illness, forms yeah. of captivity, oppression, whatever, um, marginalization, I just more and more was haunted by those realities, didn't want to live in a world that worked that way. And so started talking people into coming alongside me and saying, hey, let's figure out things that we can do that are genuinely just excuses to hang out and build relationships with each other. But yeah. the well is really a collection of excuses to do that. But some easy excuses are like people are hungry so we can sure. like get some food together. Like they don't have work so we can work together to grow some food. They, yeah. you know, transportation is an issue. Maybe we can build some bikes or whatever. So anyway, and then I, I'm, I guess about me, I'm, yeah. I'm temperamentally um, driven. And so a problem like that gnaws at me and keeps me up at night. And I feel like, oh, this is my calling, my vocation, my the thing that I've given myself to. And so then we just keep figuring it out, plugging our way forward. I love it. You had mentioned the well. Yeah. Which is why we're here. What is the well? Well, the well, well, the well, the well is a community of people okay. really that are trying our best to walk in and build relationships with folks in need okay usually material need um, but we we and, and so what happened is over time we became an organization so we are it's a 501c3 yeah. runs a bunch of programs but I would I would still say at the heart of it it is a community and that community is making up excuses to build bridges with um, and between folks that are in need and folks that have resources so like we set tables we set common tables sometimes literally tables, sometimes gardens, sometimes yeah. bike shops, but where people can come together across racial lines, economic lines, and really sit and encounter one another, hear one another's stories, realize all that they have in common. And, and hopefully like for me is to recreate what happened to me, mm. which was that my entire life has been changed by those encounters. Yeah. And I come to those encounters as one in need, okay. in need of wisdom and perspective and whatever. And I've learned so much and been guided so much there that we, we set out to do that in a bunch of different ways. So we do stuff with food, we do stuff with gardens, bikes. Okay. Open bikes, different different excuses, yeah. right? Yeah. Definitely sounds like, kind of what I was saying before, the well is a movement. It's not just a place, but you're really trying to put yourself in whatever areas of need there are. Yeah, we did have a place at one point, and okay. so that, that caused some identity crisis a little bit. Sure. Not for us, I think, as much as our reputation. Sure. Because the well that was a community and was clear to yeah. us that rented a place to do that work. Yeah. Eventually that place got 
identified as the well, which that makes okay. sense. Like go to the well. Whatever. Right. And then we got run out of the neighborhood okay. because the neighborhood has had a bit of a demographic inversion. It sure. turned historic. Money starts coming back in. So we had yeah. to leave and got a lot of pressure from the neighborhood and the city to do so. And then people were like, oh, the well is gone. And I'm like, the well is fine. We're just in hiding because we didn't have it the next step. But that's how we reoriented. That was the beginning of really where we launched Well Built Bikes. Yeah. Um, and we also moved our kind of free market model that was in a location to a mobile model, which we now call the Kinship okay. mobile, mobile Market. So we that goes out to different neighborhoods uh, that are either food deserts or have a lot of people experiencing food sure. insecurity where we're bringing food that might otherwise go wasted to families that might okay. need it. So, um, as far as your mobile market and your services that are more outward and mobile, are what geographic area are you focused on? Because I know that a lot of the work you've done has been in Tampa. Like, is that, do you just kind of work, you know, just in Tampa or like throughout the Tampa Bay area? Tell me more about that. It is all in Tampa right now okay. and it's all in familiar neighborhoods. Like. So for example, and you remember this because you used to work with me at the Good Samaritan Inn, yeah. and we would do dinners there. Well, we still do dinners there, um, but we also take food there as one of the kinship outreaches. We have a spot in Sulphur Springs. We have a spot right down the street from here. We have a spot that we go twice a month to in um, Suke City, University area. Yeah. Um, we now have a couple weekends where there's two teams that go out to different neighborhoods. Okay. Um, I am currently uh, talking to someone in St. Pete about maybe doing something over there, but there's a lot of question marks about sure. the practicality of how to get the food. Yeah, yeah, the logistics of it. Um, but ultimately, and, and the way the kinship's set up right now, it's, it's kind of beautiful because yeah. it's, you need a community of people that want to do it. So okay. let's say like a church says, hey, we got eight people that want to serve. We have a couple of leaders that are available for that to help facilitate relationships. And then we have a location that needs it. Because the way it works is like, oh, you're a third Saturday team and there's a third Saturday location. And so once a month, that community meets with this community. Mm -hmm. And that's a once a month event. Okay, great. But then the next weekend, there's another team and sure. another location. And so we're trying to iterate on that yeah. model because really it was a way for us to kind of share our ethos with right. other communities and kind of walk yeah. with them into like these common tables and and then and then as over time what's happening is then leadership emerges from within their own community sure. from either side relationships are built and we can kind of pull out and invest in I mean yeah, I, what, yeah what inspired you to launch the well or, originally I so like I told you I I became a Christian yeah I started reading the Bible taking it seriously mm -hmm. but I never went to church okay for years and then eventually I did and I hated it uh, and I was like, this has nothing to do with what I've been reading. I don't yeah. understand what this has to do with Jesus other than his name is in the songs. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't like it, but probably something's wrong with me. But I stopped going. Um, my excuse was a huge $6 million building campaign. And I was like, okay, that's a waste of money. I'm out, you know, whatever. But what ended up happening was I heard about a church that was sharing food with the homeless. And I thought, yeah. okay, that sounds a lot like, uh, you know, I was hungry and you did what? So I... I went and I volunteered at this thing. It was it was Bethel on okay. uh, Hillsborough and Rome. They were doing this. And they had a, a meal that happened there in their sure. building. But there was a, a van that went out into the community. I was like, hey, I want to go out with the van. It was like a Florida winter. So we took some blankets and some food and we went out downtown. Yeah. Spot I didn't know then. I know it now. But was walking down this alley, super dark, yeah. smelled like urine. And I kneeled down, squatted actually, because I smelled yeah. like urine, <laughs> next to a man that was in the alley and shared some food with him, sure. gave him the blanket. And I didn't know, like, I was super awkward, didn't know what to do, but I just stayed. I was like, hey man, what's your story? And I just, I was like, probably this is, I should talk to him while yeah. he gets dinner. And I did. And then that night I went home and it really, he's what happened that night. I yeah. met him and he was beautiful and we had so much in common and he had so many, so many struggles and challenges. Yeah. And I went home and I laid in bed with a blanket and a pillow and started thinking like, man, people do this kind of thing to feel good, but mm -hmm. I don't feel good. I feel like crap because like, I have a clothes in the closet, a car in the driveway, yeah. a roof over my head, running water that heats up, a refrigerator with food in it. I have access to all of these material belongings and yet this beautiful brother is sleeping in an alley, probably in his own urine, hoping someone comes by with some mm -hmm. food. 
and it began what I would call uh, like haunting me. Yeah. And really, I pointed that night as the beginning. And okay. so I was like, oh, I ha I can't live in a world that works this way. So if I'm not going to kill myself, I have to kill myself trying to change it. You know, sure. like give myself to that. Uh, I think of like Huey P. Newton's idea of revolutionary suicide. Like I got to give myself to making a difference in this. Well, I don't know if I had made a difference, but I, it's made a difference to me. Sure. And I've found very meaningful relationships there. And so I just started doing it again and again and again. And then people would say like to, to us in conversation, like, you know, there's a need on Thursday nights for food. Or did you realize there's this Good Samaritan Inn, which is like where people are hitting the streets or getting off the streets, that that might be a strategic place to be. And like, we were just guided by people along the yeah. way, like new ideas would emerge out of needs and whatever. But Ultimately, I'd, I'd say it started because of that that wow. one night with that one church and that one man. And imagine, like, I just think, like, had you not been there that one night, like, just what happens in such sensitivity with time, like, yeah, it's it's really something. Um, so I'm gonna kind of segue into something like, you know, one of the many things that you touched on that the well does is um, you have a food pantry and you yeah. have the garden. So kind of like thinking back, like my big question to you is. How do you see the well fitting into the overall food systems process? Well, so in North America, um, we waste a tremendous amount. Yes. Uh, I, th I think the numbers are up over 40% of food that's being produced is ending up in the garbage. Uh, maybe this is because of buffet lines, exp expiration dates, there's a million reasons. So like very soon, one of our drivers, or the guy that does our food pickups is gonna be popping in with food that we he has been out collecting from grocery stores around yeah. town. That, you know, it's produce that, that maybe they're not putting on the floor for whatever reason, a blemish or something, right. but we're picking it up and then making it available. So part of what we're doing is trying to capture or save the waste stream from the landfill and get it to people that are also people. cut off so building a bridge between that wasted resource right. and people that might go without. Now, I will tell you in the United States of America, right. like nobody's really starving. There is food to be had. Yeah. Now they may be malnourished from sure. unhealthy acts. Like you live on just bread potato or chips. something like that or potato chips and soda. That's right. So we're bringing in healthy food to communities that need it. But I also think about the food offering. One is like I said, for us, it is, we're not solving hunger it is an excuse for a relationship. Like we're sure. built, we're there to build relationships and this is an excuse to do that. But it's also like, I think about it almost like you think about like a universal basic income. It's like you have very limited money and you have to eat. So you go and you buy food with that. Yeah. But if you're, if you have access to some, some food to supplement that, then you can use that money to maybe get the medicine that your kids need or some other yeah. thing like that. Um, and so, I think that's an important part of what we're doing. And then also with the gardens, mm -hmm. we're inviting people to engage in the production of food. So I don't have work and I don't have food, but we can work together to grow some sure. food. We can get into the garden and start growing some things there. Yeah, I mean, and the gardens are an opportunity to participate in the production of food. So I, I seriously think, well, one, I love food, right? Sure. And, but I also think it is our most intimate connection with creation, mm -hmm. with the planet. It is something we all depend on. I think it's sacred. Um, I mean, it is it is so central to existence and relationship. So we bond over shared meal. We connect with the earth over shared meal. And I would say we encounter God in food. Sure. And so I really want to invite people into the production of food, the preparation of food, the harvesting of food, yeah. the, you know, and because I, because ultimately I believe in building bridges and community and connections because I think poverty grows out of relationships that don't work like they should. Yeah. We have houses that are empty and people without houses, food that goes wasted and people without food. And the relational healing and connection is what's needed is access to one another. And I think, man, that happens around relationship and relationship happens around the table. Mm -hmm. So that's why I use the image of the table, even if we're just turning wrenches on a bike. Like to sure. me, it's like common tables. Yeah. That's what we want to set. It's really crazy you say that. Like for me, my, philosophy, whether political or just social, socio my overall philosophy is that everybody deserves a seat at the table. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, everyone deserves to be there. So it sounds like that's almost like a kind of 
We're very close on that. I would yeah. make one caveat, unless you're an asshole. Sure. So, so well, and, and like assholes yeah. too, should, we should make every effort to make available, yeah. right? But like one of the necessities of inclusiveness is to exclude the one that makes it unsafe for other people. And, I, and not to say like it has to be, mm, that might not be the right way to say it. The one that brings violence into the situation. Sure. Right? So if, if there is a way in which like, this child can't be here because this person is a threat to this child, then this person can't be here because the child is that welcome, right? Yeah. That's the only caveat to that, which yeah. might not be worth like digging in on, although I can't help but think about it because it's been a long, yeah. hard one lesson for us that we've been like, oh, if you want to be inclusive, you got to be exclusive also. Like you got to be good here. And I think part of the work we're doing is trying to set we're trying to create space. Like a safe space. Yeah, if, I don't believe in that. Okay. Like, I don't believe that it exists. I don't think anywhere is safe. Like, nothing is actually safe, okay. right? But yeah, I mean, welcoming, hospitable, yeah. those kind of things. Um, and we want to make places where it's easier to be good. Okay. And that was one of the things that we saw over time. Like, when we started the banquet, and you remember this, it was plastic tables, scooping out of Cambros, yeah. paper plates, standing in line, hot floor today. And people would try to kill each other. Like guests would try to kill each other. You know, there'd be fights and we were, but you're like, yeah, you're dealing with mental illness and addiction. And, you know, it's to be expected. But I don't know if you remember, but when we went to tablecloths and centerpieces and romantic lighting and we shut off the fluorescent lights and like we set a table like a diner and we waited the tables and yeah. had flowers out and stuff like that, people didn't fight anymore. And what I realized was the environmental impact, yeah. psychologically, socially, spiritually, over having the table set correctly. It's dignified. It, it is. And that's why we want to keep stepping up our game with the kinship market. Um, we want to, like, we're, we're, we start with doing what's necessary. Sure. And then we're like, all right, now what's possible to make this as dignifying as possible and to offer as many choices as possible, which is one of the important things we want to do because people that are in poverty I would say poverty is a lack of choices sure. so if I don't have freedom or choices I'm poor like yeah. that's how I equate that and so we want to be like would you like chicken or beef if possible right. now it's not always possible because of our resources but Absolutely. you know if we can get some help with resources then uh, we can offer more choices absolutely you know? well has your view of food changed at all since establishing the well? And if so, can you expound on that? My view of food has changed dramatically. Um, I would say deepened and developed though. Um, you know, a big, a big part of that was um, my, so my now fiance and I, yeah. but back in the day did a local food experiment. You've heard people doing like a hundred mile fast or yeah. diet basically we only eat food within 100 miles and we got super strict like no olive oil because there's no olive oil being pressed here sure. no no we actually went without salt for a long time so i thought oh, we're gonna die from lack of sodium and then i dehydrated gulf water which was probably not advisable but i needed salt yeah. right and i was gonna be strict like rigidly strict that experience deeply affected me um, one is just to have done it but also to realize there isn't local food like you're, it was so hard to survive and to get food because, and especially with Tampa, 50, you have a hundred mile radius and half of that's the Gulf. So yeah. I, I went, spent a lot of time fishing, yeah. trying to catch food basically. Sure. Um, but that deeply impacted me because I realized if we didn't have systems that were bringing in food, the cost of a tomato would be bloodshed. And I want to do something about that. And I want to do something about that with gardens. And yeah. I want to do something about that with community building and development. Um, but we've got to work towards something like food security locally sure. and but that's deeply affected me um, I don't it's it's almost like if you ask the mystic to define God because yeah. I'm like it's such a powerful thing that I find like saying how this is evolved it's actually ineffable it's like I could go on and on and on but it's a product of going yeah I don't know how to put words to yeah. the what I believe is the power and centrality of food in creation, in, in relationship, and in faith, and, yeah. in, and in every aspect of holistic being. I think mm -hmm. food is crucial. 
uh, and sexual. The well has its hands in several different areas. So my question to you is, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got, yeah, there's a lot Whatever of Whatever you feel like to identify with bulging. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of things we want to get our hands into. Sure. But we are, we have always been like, look, our our vision, right? Yeah. The vision statement is uh, to see needs met, bridges built, and a city made whole. Yeah. And the reality of that is meeting needs is fine, and the city made whole is a powerful vision, but the building of bridges is the thing. Sure. So we want to build as many bridges as we can and okay. use any excuse that we can. We have a lot of ideas how to do that. And Well Built Bikes has been a very successful project and one that has deepened our conviction around social sure. enterprise and leveraging business for the sake of our aims. Yeah. Uh, both for sustainability reasons, impact reasons. Like it's been it's been a powerful lesson to us. So we want to iterate on that. Yeah. We want to iterate on that possibly with uh, with food. I want to iterate on that in like you stay tuned because as we aim toward developing a well-built city you will see lots of initiatives beginning because we want to we want to get our hands in a lot more places there's a lot of things we've developed a capacity or competency in uh, that we believe we could really meet needs in the community around food transportation housing uh, basic needs of the people we interact with and we believe we can build sustainable businesses that offer sure. earned income opportunities for those folks as well and we're gonna work like hell at that um, and and really invite everybody to just contribute both toward what we're doing but also just on your own toward the vision of a well-built city to say like we want a place where there's good connections relationships civic engagement freedom and this is the thing we're gonna keep clawing our way toward um, so, oh, um, if someone wanted to donate food, where and how could they do so? And I mean, donate food to the well. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, we can use all the food that we can get. Okay. Um, I mean, we are basing we are basing all of our food kind of works of mercy out of the. Um, Waters Avenue Church, sure. 609 West Waters. There's not always someone there though, so maybe hitting one of us up or letting us know, sure. or, or use a Sunday morning because they'll always be here on oh, a Sunday okay. morning. Um, you could bring things by uh, Well Built Bikes. That's okay. not maybe the best option, but um, we're there sure. and we're there almost every day except for Monday, so you can just drop it there and we'll get it here. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is we're we're now set up with feeding Tampa Bay, so oh, we have great. an account because we don't have enough food and the needs are tremendous and we needed to supplement what we were doing. Now there's a handling fee there, so it's about I forget the number, let's say 18 cents a pound. Like you can get 555 pounds of food for 100 bucks. Yeah. So like I've been been encouraging people like don't go buy food to bring us because you can contribute financially toward those purchases, which is really just handling fees. And we can get a tremendous amount more that way. Um, and so we have an account set up there. It's a long string of numbers. So what I'm doing is I actually set up on our, if you just went to welltampa.com to where it says donate, there is an option that is just like, I don't know if it says like the free markets or yeah. kid ship or it's pretty clear that it's toward food and everything that comes in toward okay. that goes directly toward getting that food. Awesome. Uh, and that is both like helping with gas for the guys doing our pickups or getting the handling fees from beating Tampa Bay uh, but we've been really grateful for that connection and they have pretty high standards which we want to keep raising the bar on our own standards and that's been really good we've been we've had to professionalize a bit of what sure. we're doing because of that corporate connection and I gotta say it doesn't suck yeah that's good awesome so my last question is if someone wanted to find out more about the well and its many wonderful initiatives, um, what websites or social media handles can people go to? Yeah, so we do have a really crappy website, welltampa.com. It's just an old blog site that used to be super active. It's not been very active these days. Most of what's active right now is um, so uh, at the well 813 on Twitter, most more in, active on Instagram at Well Built Bikes okay. um, for the bike shop, and that's a lot of activities being promoted through there. Um, mine is at Johnny Produce, okay, great. and that's kind of, I'll be a hub of a lot of those things, kind of sure. saying what's going on. And um, and yeah, we've got uh, some work ahead of us in terms of like centralizing some of that, but yeah, social media is, that's a good way to connect with us. And, and then just ask me Sounds through good. that, yeah.
I'll yeah. connect people. Sounds great. Well, once again, John, thank you so much for being on this segment of Farm to Spork. Once again, folks, if you want to find out more about the well, get in touch with John and just get your hands involved in whatever way you can. Really, all hands are on deck. I'm going to have a link to all of the websites and social media handles below. Uh, they're really great folks, so I definitely recommend you just learn more about them. But until then, I'll catch you next time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.